this content is for kids. It's not for kids. No, isn't that what I said? No, it's not for kids. If oh. you are 13 years or younger, no. this is not for you. Do I have to kill somebody in order to actually make that point across? No, man, you don't have to kill Wait no a one. second. Oh, no, 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 no. If you return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture. Greetings! You're watching Septum Sin vs. the World. I'm Septum Sin. This is Kotobuki Jake. Oh, Hi. All right. And we are here to show you what we got. Ah, uh, okay. yes. And though I'm tired, I am much better this week than I was last week. Thank goodness it was sort of a false alarm. You never know in this day and age when you're sick. Right. <laughs> so, so with that. With that being said, uh, we'll go ahead and get started with the most exciting news of all, our Gundam news. Mm -hmm. No Gundam. What is most exciting news? <laughs> <laughs> no Gundam this week. <laughs> but we do have some amazing offerings right now. So, we got some fun things this week. So, uh, I'm going to have a start off with, uh, I'm looking down this list. Oh, I'm going to have to grab one I missed. Oh, well, let's start one with, uh, with the least favorite. Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge. I'm Ooh, not even that's sure. That's on my quality there. Uh, I thought I was supposed to. No, I I'm started off I because I'm the Criterion ones. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> obvious Criterion <laughs> film right there. But uh, with luck, 
it'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. I think it's like well, animated. It looks like. Uh, Mm -hmm. I have very little interest, actually, in the Mortal Kombat stuff. I originally picked it because I, I thought Jake would want to present it for some reason. Uh, I, I can't for remember what the... Didn't you have a big interest in the Mortal Kombat movies, the original ones? Well, uh, of course, I was a kid at the time, but... <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's all I really got to say about that. And I'm gonna go and grab my, one of the other ones that was a big one that I forgot to grab. So, I will okay. give it to you. So okay. So my first one I'm gonna mention is a uh, movie that I probably should be familiar with. This at least in principle, but I'm really not. It's an adaptation by F.W. Murnau of Nosferatu fame of Moliere's play Tartuffe, which I do know that play, uh, but I'm not familiar with the film. But, you know, F.W. Murnau doing Moliere, Emile Jannings as Tartuffe, you could do worse than this. And it's a film from 1920. 25, kind of an older one. Am I remembering correctly that this is like an Arrow or is it an Arrow release? I think it is an Arrow release. Yeah. I feel like it's one of those specialty companies, but pretty exciting either way. <laughs> oh, yeah, most definitely. I would say so. I'm getting this off of here. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, then. Well, speaking of Arrow, the series Arrow is finally ending on physical media with season eight and the complete series. Woo! So it's also is going to have that big old crossover that they were having. Uh, with everybody, mm -hmm. that little that series, our short mini series, is going to be included with yeah. that. So it's going to be kind of fun. They have some fun guest appearances. If he hadn't mm -hmm. died, you know that Adam Spoiler. West was going to be there. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, you yeah, know he would have been in that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, still, I, I am going to be curious. I haven't seen it, but I haven't watched all of the air. Uh, he, have you watched uh, that crossover yet? No, I'm still working on the first crossover, which actually uh, we hit a snag with that. Hence huh. my question about Legends of Tomorrow. <laughs> I, I had the timing wrong on that series, and then I got to a crossover where uh, clearly events had happened that we had not seen yet. So, yeah, that's yeah. the one thing. I, it's sort of like when I was re when I would read a comic book series, mm -hmm. and you hit that one comic book that was dealing with the crossover, and you're like, "Oh, oh okay, <laughs> right." But like, there were a lot uh, of little. Yeah. There were some unofficial crossovers beforehand, like you know, Flash oh, yeah. and Arrow had a lot of little crossovers, but <laughs> this one was the one where it was like it started in Flash, that was and then the went to Arrow. What's that? There was an alien one. I remember that. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Started in Flash, went to Arrow, then went to Legends, and then I think it concluded in Supergirl. So, Cuz I've we're working seen on it. I've <laughs> seen all but one season of Arrow now. So, yeah. Uh, you know, I've only seen like two seasons of Flash. So, I need to I need right. to up my game on some of those and then maybe just start collecting each series one at a time because Whenever I would try and collect them all at once, it would be almost like $100 plunked down for each season. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. Why do, you think I, uh, why do you think I have holes? Because I was buying them on sale and forgetting to plug the holes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, even then, but, I was only buying them for like $10 a season. I would never pay more well, than yeah. that. So, yeah, that's generally been the limit. Anyway. It's too much. Overload. Oh, so, yes. I'm going to move it over, though, to you. Yes. So we have the first of two Criterion films being released this week. It's one that I have heard of, I've heard a lot about, 
but I've never actually seen. And that is a movie called Me and You and Everyone We Know, which is directed by Miranda July and co-stars July and John Hawks. And it's supposedly a, let's see, Criterion says, playful and profoundly, I can't speak, playful and profoundly transgressive. It's a poetic look at the tortuous roots we take to intimacy in an isolating world and the moments of magic and redemption that unite us. Ah, fun way to put it. But they have a decent amount of special features on here, including, uh, says four films from July's Joni for Jackie video chain letter and a documentary about the project. So that sounds kind of interesting. Um, some other documentaries, a conversation between her and your wife's favorite person, Lena Dunham. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, some, some stuff that looks pretty interesting. <laughs> All right. Well, the only other one I have on here that I actually don't have a physical copy of is Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Another one I figured that if I didn't take it, you probably would have picked it up. I only have one Elvira have film, curiosity. and that's Elvira's Haunted Hills, where I just picked that up for like a steal there. I need to get those. They're kind you gotta of, love the title. They're kind of campy, and uh, I've heard a lot Kinda? of fun. Yeah, well, <laughs> and I've I had a lot of fun with Haunted Hills, so maybe this one will be interesting too. Uh, mm -hmm. So that that will be uh, a fun uh, a fun little thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not uh, I'm not too psyched one way or the other. I mean, it's not on my list for well, it is, but it's like on my. If it comes up really cheap, much like Haunted Hills, <laughs> and I got money to spend. Right. There it goes. Well, that's a pretty good segue to my anime selection for the week, which is Date A Live 3, which <laughs> I have the first one. I've seen the first one. I have not seen the second one, and I forgot there even was a third one. Uh to be honest, I remember nothing about the series other than it has to do with it has something to do with avatars or alternate worlds or some such thing. I cannot remember the specifics. It's not exactly a high art series, but it is a lot of fun. And I did I got the the art box, the, the limited edition art box for a pretty darn good price, so I had to jump on it. Uh, but because of that, I kind of want to get the others in art box form. So, yeah, that's probably never happening. But Funimation release, if you hadn't guessed. Uh, yeah, if you like those kind of, uh, just kind of uh, have a good time, action-packed kind of series that you don't really care if it's quality, give it a go. But. I mean, it, it looks like a combination between Deers and Heaven's Lost Property. And nowhere near as H -E as either of those, if I remember correctly. But there's still a little bit of that uh, feel. It sounds etchy. Yeah, the concept sounds etchy anyway. And it was but, nowhere near as fun as Deers. Definitely. Well, actually, is either one, come to think of it. <laughs> Oh, well, I was going to check my notes real quick. Okay, got that one, got that one, got that one, got that one. All right, so all my other ones I have. <laughs> so I don't even have to look okay. at these notes anymore. So, all right. So all right. one of the other ones that's coming out here is one I have a uh, thing called... Uh, Honey and Clover box set three, right? Woo! Which is a pretty cool box set, which also is showing up here in Honey and Clover two, which was a second series. It had a lot of it had a lot of mixed feelings for me because it was very bittersweet. Mm -hmm. But the whole story has been bittersweet. So there's a reason, though, it is my favorite uh, of all. Well, maybe not of all, but it's definitely in that top five. It always cycles in that. So. 
I'm glad that's getting that Blu-ray release. I'm glad it's continuing to cycle. If you haven't seen Honey and Clover, you can get it in two volumes now, uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, you can only get it in three before, and they're, they're pretty volumes. They're also now pretty much out of print. And mm -hmm. uh, it's a coming-of-age type story. It's about some college people in an art college. And... Uh, Really, the real life stress and hijinks that they get into. It, it, it's pretty mm -hmm. fun. So, mm -hmm. uh, that's all I got to say about that. Yes, excellent series. Much better than Data Live. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, next up, we have a. Uh, a release, I'm quite sure this is an Arrow release, and I think it's hearkening back to something we discussed, uh, was it last week, I guess? And to be honest, I know nothing about this except that it, as I said before, always looking for opportunities to see new, uh, new foreign cinema, and to see these are cool-looking sets. And this one is called Solid Metal Nightmares, the films of Shinya Tsukamoto. That's about all I have on that. Do you have the film list with that? Because I don't actually, I forgot to bring that up. And here I thought you were going to look it up. <laughs> That's a lot of films on there, too. Yeah. I wasn't Probably, familiar. Yeah, I, was gonna... I was not familiar with any of the material. I figured, yeah. It was, uh, was going to be like, I said, Jake would like this. This is a Japanese uh, artist, well, I, and uh, he would like it just because. <laughs> yeah, but the cover art does have me a little worried, but still, it could be uh, fun. I mean, shoot. And, uh, uh, I was thinking to myself, maybe he did Tokyo Gore Police. If he did, I would definitely have been like, I'm not jumping on this. Oh. But, uh, yeah, no. yeah, if that's the case, then it would not be necessarily <laughs> my... Uh, my top uh my top thing oh especially if it's uh ooh, some of the stuff he has been in is stuff i'm a little concerned about oh but he was in shin godzilla which was a very fun movie <laughs> but i'm assuming this is his work as a director yeah probably i mean yeah, like i said there's, there's, a, there's a number of films this is true. He's got a, he's credited with two short films dating all the way back to 1974. His most recent feature films apparently from 2018. Not sure how many of these are on there, but that looks kind of fun. Tetsuo apparently is one of the ones he's best known for. I'm guessing that's on there. But uh. yeah. <laughs> Well, we'll find out, or whoever gets it, we'll find out. If you're looking, again, if you're looking to collect Japanese cinema, or especially the Arrow releases, this is a good one to, to probably try and snag. Because if nothing else, you know it'll end up being an out-of-print collector thing. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. It looks fun. I mean, if anything, if you're looking to get a good, like, just a bunch of movies and learn about different directors, it never hurts. To me, if you, if you're, especially if you've got time on your hands... Mm -hmm. which is always nice and, and so many yes. people many people watching do have time on their hands which is right. unfortunate but if you do have time on your hands and you don't have a huge collection mm -hmm. uh, you know it never hurts to get grab a whole handful of movies and just take a take a shot mm -hmm. so um speaking of taking a shot don't drink the water yeah not a Woody Allen film, but a Woody Allen oh. inspired, but a film inspired by a play by Woody Allen with mm -hmm. Jackie Gleason and a long running cast, uh, Estelle Parsons, and a number of other, like, you know, hit people from the day. Let's see here. We had John Delaney. So, you know, it's fun to have a number of, like, older school. Uh, stars. I was actually listening to his book, uh, and I've been listening to the audiobook for Apropos of Nothing, which is his uh, autobiography. 
And it was, it's very mm -hmm. interesting because I have gotten to the part where he has talked about uh, don't drink the water, which he spent tons of time on. Believe it or not, the original play uh, had, um, gosh, Vivian Vance as uh, one of the leading females. Mm. But apparently she, <laughs> she was such a big star at the time that she was too big for the movie. I mean, for the uh, Broadway play, if, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. And uh, apparently it went through so many rewrites, the way it looked at the end of the run bore no resemblance to the original. And uh, like mm. Woody Allen is with many things, he, he kind of looks at the, this version of the film as, as kind of crap. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't necessarily go by his opinion on things, because if I did, then I wouldn't like any of his movies hardly, because he, he has a pretty bad I got, I got to though. say, though, I got to say, though, I do think there's a little bit more of a charm to the remake. I, I, I enjoyed that one quite a bit. Oh, I enjoy the one that, that I enjoyed the other one better uh, with um, mm -hmm. he has Don DeLuise and has a pretty good cast as well. Pretty strong comic cast. Right. So well, I mean, that one's pretty much led by uh, Michael J. Fox, Mayim mm -hmm. Bielik, uh, Julie Kavner, of course, Alan himself. But yeah. Uh, well, yeah, and Alan was on, had the, yeah. I think, had creative control as well. I believe so. so. That's uh, so very different. Oh, yeah. But if you want something that's kind of cool history, this is not mm -hmm. bad history right here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So, um, next up, a film that's probably about to fade into the dustbin of history, but it looks interesting, and I'm kind of curious about it is um, it's always interesting when you see people who start out as child stars and when they become adults, you feel like they're doing everything they can to make people forget where they came, got their start. And such is the case with Mr. Daniel Radcliffe, who is desperate to become anything but Harry Potter. And some of his actions, uh, some of his uh, experiments have worked beautifully. From what I hear, Guns Akimbo was a lesser experiment, but it looks fun. It's a, kind of an action film, came out at the start of the year. Eh, I want to give it a go. <laughs> Wasn't he in, like, Swiss Army Man or something like that? I can't remember what that movie was called. Wasn't he in what? Was it called Swiss Army Man? It was called something like that. He was like this... It was a weird Swiss movie. Army Man, yes. Yeah. Uh, I've heard it's a good one, though. Very mm. odd film. Very odd film. Right. All right. Well, I've shown this off last week in my pickups. But I got mm -hmm. this from Right Stuff, so it should be no doubt that this would be coming out a week from now. <laughs> and that yeah. is... I know you have to show it. I've got it right here, which is Lupin the Third, The Last Job. I thought like that a, looked familiar. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I just picked it up like, it just came to me last week. So if you want to know more about the film itself, I talk a little bit about it in more of my pickups. Mm -hmm. But it's always kind of cool when you get things a little bit ahead of time. You know, yep. Makes everyone yep. want to watch it before it comes out. <laughs> yep, so it does. <sighs> well, I'm going to move it on to you because I talked about it last mm. time. <laughs> So, um, this one doesn't have a huge amount either, except that another film that came out at the start of the year, uh, about three weeks before, uh, Guns Akimbo apparently came out right before people started staying home from theaters. So, it wasn't one of the last last, but that probably hurt its box office. This movie apparently came out and sank like a stone without any help from Corona. It's a movie called The Rhythm Section that stars uh, Blake Lively as a woman whose entire family has been killed and she wants revenge. And it's also got Jude Law and a number of other individuals in it. And I will be honest, I saw the trailer for this and thought, well, that looks interesting. And I'm still interested. From what I hear, they do a really good job turning her into a would-be action star. 
in the film, but apparently the film itself could have been handled better. And for whatever, it was just a victim of something. I don't know if it was terrible marketing or just people not in the mood for it at the time or whatever, but this film sank so hard, it almost became a meme. It was... I don't know. It, it was it was a very it was like let's see, fifty thousand budget, the or fifty million budget. The U.S. gross is currently set at five point four million, with another five hundred thousand worldwide. So, I I had to mention it just for that, but. I actually do want to see this. So if I find it on Black Friday for four bucks, I'll probably get it. <laughs> Help them make that budget back. <laughs> well, I have, of yeah. course, I, I saved this one to mostly near last because it's obviously the best mm -hmm. one. And obviously. that was uh, just one of the guys. <laughs> ah. Which I actually do have a copy of. This is one of those comedies in like uh, the late 80s early mm -hmm. 90s era i can't remember what mm -hmm. year it was oh mid 80s mm -hmm. apparently and i don't know it just was amusing maybe it wouldn't hold up as much these days it's about like mm -hmm. this this woman who she's uh, like an 18 year old woman or so on and she's like trying to do this for college she's trying to mm -hmm. be taken seriously but mm -hmm. all the men there are like, no, we're not going to take you seriously. And she's like, well, is that because I'm a woman? And they're like, no. Well, she says, well, heck with that. I'm going to make an experiment. So she, you know, straps herself down, cuts her hair, and uh, pretends to be a guy. And mm -hmm. uh, so that she can prove that submitting the same type of material as a guy will get published Whereas, you know, submitting it as a woman would not. And there's some truth in that, sadly. Mm -hmm. uh, she ends up uh, helping out this one guy who is not, you know, has not been treated so well by others and befriending mm -hmm. him and then ends up uh, developing uh, some possible feelings for him at the end. But mm -hmm. we'll uh, save that for if anybody hasn't seen it in the, let's see, it was 85. So it's what, uh, five... 15, 25, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, 35 years since it's been out? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Uh, you've had a little bit of time to catch up on this classic, people. <laughs> yeah. But still, it's a fun film. I enjoyed it, and uh, I need to open my copy and just watch it again. You know, it's kind of good to revisit these things. Right. Yeah, it's weird. Out of the ones that I have, that I've revisited, a lot of my animated stuff that I really liked as a child doesn't seem to hold up. But mm -hmm. a lot of these campy comedies, the nostalgia factor helps them hold up for me. Right. For the most part. All for the right. <laughs> Well, and nostalgia is a major factor in my next title. A little, little two films, technically, one from 91, which I, is the one that I'm nostalgic for, and one from 94 that, to be honest, I don't think I ever saw, or if I did, I don't remember it well. But I definitely saw the first one. And, of course, I'm talking about a pair of films getting a Blu-ray re-release this week from uh, that star Anna Klumski, and they are My Girl and My Girl 2. Uh, the first one, of course, co-stars Macaulay Culkin and featured Dan Aykroyd, Jamie Lee Curtis, Griffin Dunn, et cetera, et cetera. And the second one also featuring a Aykroyd and Curtis. Not Culkin, because if you ever saw the first film, yeah, uh, there's a certain scene that probably scarred many a child. Uh, <laughs> I keep thinking to a Nicolas, uh, Nicolas Cage line in another film. <laughs> oh, 
Puppies. <laughs> oh, so so so. At any rate, you're talking about wow. Um, I you you mentioned the other film, and it's made me start doing the math here. My girl is 28 years old. Uh, you, know what, what? you know the sad thing is I have never yeah. seen any of the films. Really? No, not wow. seen either of them. Uh, uh, I I've never seen the second one that I know of, but the first one is a classic. It really is, and the second one supposedly is a good one. I've never but, seen. Um, I mean, I've never seen Pretty Woman either. So. <laughs> well, yeah, I never saw that until college, but still, yeah, that was the same year, wasn't it? Slightly yeah. different age group being targeted and uh, what have you with that one, but uh, that would have been the future of the two characters when they grew up. If that had happened. <laughs> yeah, isn't that something? <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I don't know if these are significant re-releases or if they just decided to get them out of the vault and dust them off again. But uh, it would be good if you if you don't have them, especially if you don't have them on Blu-ray. It's a good opportunity to to go ahead. You know, this order is a good order because uh, you, you really do have the, the best item on this list for last. Yeah. Yeah. So I I'm going to go present mine, which is not the best. <laughs> but it's a fun <laughs> film. I, I have debated upgrading. And if they ever did a two film collection, like an Arrow 2 film release of it, I may. But we're talking Escape. From New York, Kurt Russell. Ah. Oh, sorry, Escape from L.A. But Escape from mm. New York was the original, and it actually inspired characters like Solid Snake, because Snake Plissken is his character. Mm. It's in a dystopian future where apparently several states have been kind of walled off from the rest of the world and made into criminal dumping grounds. In this case, California mm. is this kind of weird no man's land where everything goes. And mm. he's got to once again jump into it and rescue somebody. It's been so long. But it's got mm -hmm. some so many fun cameos in it. It's got uh, Ash himself. Well, not as Ash, but, you know, Bruce Campbell. It's got Steve Buscemi, Peter Fonda, Pam Greer, Stacey Keach, Cliff Robertson, George Corface, <laughs> and more. I mean, that is a lot of fun cameo characters. It's, it's a John Carpenter film, and it is a fun film. To me, it's a fun, cheesy action ride. You can't get better than, than that. It's twice the cheese of the original so though the original is a better film overall this one it, it is twice as fun back to you there you go <laughs> okay i was gonna say you need to get me back in there to <laughs> Apparently, you got you 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 enjoyed my uh, escape from LA so much you, you had to leave. All right, exactly. You showed me one of those, right? Like I'm trying to remember. I, both I know I would have at least showed you back. To, I mean, Escape from New York, but you yeah. should have seen both because they're both awesome films. I mean, yeah. the part where he's surfing on the huge tidal wave with the machine gun going. I mean, that's just awesome right there. So. One that is an awesome film that I'm a little bit surprised has not already been a Criterion release, given the track record of the director involved. And honestly, I held off getting it because I was waiting for the Criterion release, and I ended up grabbing it for four bucks on Black Friday. <laughs> but... And the Criterion release is somewhat disappointing on the features, although it still will be an advantage over the bare bones one. I'm speaking, of course, of Wes Anderson's film, The Grand Budapest Hotel, hmm. which is a very fun movie. Very fun. It's one of his, it is one of his more fun films. It was one of his more Oscar nominated films. Uh, it was up for quite a few awards, although. 
there were some surprising gaffes, the most egregious of which is Ray Fine was not nominated for Best Actor. This is one of the best roles he will ever have. He was hilarious. He walked the line between over-the-top comedy and, and drama in a way that most actors could not do. So, yeah, he got robbed of a nomination. But he plays the concierge of the Grand Budapest Hotel. His page boy and protege is played by Tony Revolori. Uh, there's a young sweet shops girl who's played by Saoirse Ronan. There's a detective, I believe it is, played by Edward Norton. Uh, you've also got uh, a brief cameo by uh, Anderson stalwart uh, Bill Murray. And you've got just tons of other people in there. Tilda Swinton, F. Murray Abraham, etc., etc., etc. Wonderful score by Alexander Spla. You, well, yeah, uh, Willem Dafoe, Jeff Goldblum. Oh, right, the scene with Dafoe and Goldblum and the dog. <laughs> oh, <laughs> such a good scene. <laughs> Jude Law's in there, Harvey Keitel, Adrian Brody. It's a little skimpy on the special features. Uh, Criterion really brought their B game to this, unfortunately. But it does include a new documentary, a new audio commentary featuring Anderson, Roman Coppola, Kent Jones, and Jeff Goldblum. So that should be fun to listen to. <laughs> and some other good stuff, too. So... uh it's exciting that it's finally getting a Criterion release. It's kind of nice that they've stopped just rubber stamping Criterion on every one of Anderson's films. But you would have thought they would have still given it a little bit more <laughs> effort with the time involved, you know? Yeah. Uh, that I mean, is coming true. out. That That's going on the July list, I'm sure. Or at least there's a good chance of it. Better huh? than uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox, which just got like a like a very quick Criterion release. Wasn't that that cool? was the other one they held off on. Oh, and Moonrise Kingdom, they held oh, off yeah. on. They've started holding off on them, but I'm glad that they, yeah. they need to hold off on them. But the original release, and I've got the uh, I've got the. Oh, I'm holding it up. I can't. Yeah. yeah. Now I like this release. It's very oh, pretty. It's nice I mean, it's one. got the pretty like thing there, and. Right. It's got some decent special features on it. I mean, it's got a making of, um, right. you know, a uh, I think a commentary on it, Bill Murray segment. Uh, oh. So it and, might yeah. not even be. It might even be worth to keep the old copy and eventually get the new. But it's hard to say. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for yeah. now, I don't really feel the need to get the Criterion because this is right. an okay, okay edition. They would have to be like major. Yeah. Upgrade. Uh, I mean, they should have at least kept the old the bonus features from the first release, but yeah, maybe they anyway, want you to collect it, them all, like Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, you gotta catch them all. Yeah. Uh, well, I want to see if there are those all people right? who have those Criterion releases all the way back to like video cassette and laser disc. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, with that being said, I guess that's everything mm -hmm. for this time. We had a pretty good uh, run this time. Yeah. So um, with that being said, I wish you all a good day, and we'll mm -hmm. see you on the next one. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>